Hi, welcome online church. This is our Resurrection Easter Sunday service. We are so glad that you can join us today as we celebrate what God has done for us in Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. Stick around till the end of the service. We have some information for you, but until then, enjoy service. We saw him with our very own eyes. We gazed upon him and heard him speak. Our hands actually touched him and the one who was from the beginning, the living expression of God. This life giver was made visible and we had seen him. We testify to this truth. The eternal life giver lived face to face with the Father and has now dawned upon us. So we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard about this life giver so that we may share and enjoy this life together. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. This good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the son of God when he rose from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up and read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And he said, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day, be raised to life. No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent His Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. Carrying the cross by Himself, He went to a place called the Place of the Skull. In Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed Him to the cross, Two others were crucified with them, on either side with Jesus in between them. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. God, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation. The new day was dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. 
I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Amen. Why don't you guys stand and give him praise this morning. Let's worship together.
from the grave. God, we worship you. We praise you. We honor you. So good. So worthy. Amen. Welcome to church. We're here to worship, to celebrate our risen Savior. We're just going to continue in worship.
But Jesus said, you are mine. The enemy thought he had me. But Jesus said, you are mine. The enemy thought he had me. But Jesus said, you are mine. Come on, church. The enemy thought he had me. But Jesus said, you are mine.
picture I see bright crimson robes with over the ashes a wide open too where there should be a casket children are singing and dancing and laughing the father is welcome this is our homecoming roses and blue pushed up from the embers oh and rivers of tears from the good times remember and families are singing and dancing and father is welcoming event that takes place in our body it's not that they're just now being welcomed in but they're making a public profession of their faith to all mankind that they have died to the old man and they've resurrected in new life that's what we're going to celebrate today is new life and today before you leave this place if you have not experienced new life or maybe you walked away from the life that that the father had given you but you want to return. Today is a day to return. Today is a day to receive that new life. I'm going to tell you, Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday service are some of the most difficult service I ever prepare for. You say, Tracy, why? They're so easy. But here, here's some of my reasons. People come who don't normally attend. Some people come hoping that the pastor will make it short and sweet and let them get to the food. I've already heard that com comment today, you know. Today's uh, one of those holidays I'm going to get to eat. And they're happy about that. But, but And most people have heard the, the historical events that I'm going to share with you. Today. You've heard them year after year after year. If you've been raised or grow up in a Christian family, you've heard this over and over and over again. And you think you've got it down. And let me tell you, you've just peeled back a little bit of the onion to the core. It's going to take you a while to get it all down realize it. The resurrection is powerful. People think they know everything about the event, but today you don't. Today, without denigrating the awesome power and importance of, of the historic events, I want to make sure that you truly realize this one thing, and that is new life. New life given to all who by faith will believe and receive the salvation that's given to you through Jesus Christ. It's all about new life. As, as, as I grow older, and some of you, I, I got a few comments. I like, I like that, that beard. It's, it's got a lot of gray in it, though, today, Tracy. Let me tell you, I like new life. I like to get a good night's sleep and wake up refreshed and feeling great 
I like to, what I'm doing is I'm starting my timer so that I don't go too long, guys, okay? So. I, I like new life. I want new life. You say, Tracy, is salvation going to bring you uh, a revived body? Not now, but you know what? One day I'm going to have new life. I'm going to talk to you about new life today. If you have your Bibles, let's start in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 7. It says there, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day, rise. On the third day, rise. I don't care what the culture is celebrating today. I don't care what the world's celebrating today. We are celebrating the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sunday will never be the same because of this event. Years ago, as I was driving to Waco, Texas, and Vicki and, and, and a couple of the girls were with me, not all of them. I don't think Lauren went on this trip, but uh, she was married and having kids and stuff. So it was just the, the uh, uh, four of us, four of us. And uh, we were on our way to Waco, Texas. And I was listening to a lot of different music to keep myself alert. Because if you drive a long distance with three women in the car, they'll fall asleep. <laughs> Amen. Amen, okay. Make sure you're with me. And, and so I'm listening to a variety of music, all kinds of music from all over, and, and, a, and this song came on the radio or on the, the speakers that, that caught my ear. And, and the title of the song is Sunday Will Never Be the Same. 1967, Spanky and our gang, re, our gang released an album with this, this title of this song, Sunday Will Never Be the Same. Resurrection Sunday titles are, are tough to come by because all the good ones have been taken. Yeah, are you with me? It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. You've heard that one probably. You, you, you've heard the, I'm going all in. Good news from the graveyard. Jesus Christ and, and, uh, and the problem of death. Why are you weeping? The risen, the rising, and the, re and the rejected stone. The death of death. I mean, all these great titles, and Tracy, you've got to come up with a title. Well, that's my title. Sunday will never be the same. I know some of you are wanting me to sing it, but I'm not going to, okay? Sunday will never be the same. Go home and YouTube it. It'll, it's it's kind of cool. Uh, for all of us over a certain age. All right. Uh, but, but all the titles. Been, so today, my title is Sunday Will Never Be the Same. In Luke chapter 24, verse 1, it says, But on the first day of the week, the first day of the week is Sunday. You guys are good, sharp today. At early dawn, they went to the tomb taking spices they had prepared. The event that we celebrate today changed the New Testament church. It started it. This event changed the New Testament church, and it brought us something very powerful. It brought us a day that we, the New Testament church, would come together and celebrate the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Not just once a year, but every Sunday. Every Sunday. New Testament came, and the worshipers began to worship. And in, in the early centuries of the, of the Christian church everywhere, they worshipped on Sunday. We know that because Christian writers described the ancient worship, such as Justin Martin, who died in 157. I mean, just 157. So he had been a part of the New Testament church. 
all ancient churches from, from uh, uh, Gaul to uh, uh, Armenia had their main worship services on Sunday. Contrary to the beliefs of some where they say, well, well, it was changed by the Pope or by Constantine. They changed it to Sunday. Ultimately, I have to tell you, no, the, the founding fathers of our movement, the New Testament church, worshipped on Sunday. You know what the odd thing is? Rome, at times, they, they lived under a 10-day work week. Okay? So they would work 10 days. So Sunday did not fall on a holiday. And so... You know what the New Testament Christians did? They came together before the dawn to worship Jesus Christ. Man, that's commitment. Some of you had trouble getting here at 10. Some of you drag in a couple of minutes late. You don't think I know? I know. I didn't see you before church, and then I seen you when I got up here. You weren't here at 10 o'clock. But they were so committed to, to, to the cause of Jesus Christ. Many of them had, had, had listened to his ministry, had, had heard him speak, had, had witnessed the miracles that he did. And, and then they, were, they witnessed the miracle of him raising from the dead. Vicki came in this morning and talked to me. And, and it's funny how our conversations lead to my messages sometimes. But she comes in and she says, you know what, I... We talked about her mother, her losing her mother, and she said, you know, if God had raised her up from her deathbed, you know, she would still die again. But no, Jesus Christ came and rose on a Sunday to give us a day to worship new life. Sunday was the universal uh, day for the Christians to worship. It was also called the day it was the day after the Sabbath and it was also the day of first fruits the festival of first fruits which is why Paul calls Jesus' resurrection the first fruit of the resurrection and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 20 through 21 he says this, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for as by a man comes death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. Not, not to die again, but to, to have life forever. Ever since the first, well, think about this. Since the first day of the week is the eighth day of the previous week, it's the first day of new creation. Amen? It's the first day of new creation. It's the first day of something new. We've had seven days of the same thing through creation, but now we have the first day of new creation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul goes on to say, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and the, behold, the new has come. Salvation in Jesus Christ brings new. No, it doesn't mean that your body is going to last forever because we live in a world of sin, but it means you have a new life that will last forever. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead during his ministry. He raised numerous people from the dead. The, the, the latest one before his crucifixion and resurrection was Lazarus. And you know what? Lazarus was revived. He wasn't resurrected. He was revived because ultimately Lazarus ends up dying. But Jesus Christ in his resurrection, he never dies. Which is what he wants us to experience. In the first century, many Christians, both Jews and Gentiles, were God-fearers, and they continued to attend synagogue inst uh, instruction on the Sabbath, but then they attended Sunday worship. Like I told you, they got up very early in the morning because it was a work day, the Sabbath. Our new Sabbath on Sunday was a work day in the Roman Empire, and so what did they have to do? They had to get up before the dawn. Commitment to this new cause. Commitment to this new cause. You say, but this all happened. How, how did it fulfill prophecy? I want to take you back 500 to 700 years before the crucifixion and resurrection. The prophet Isaiah foretold and expanded on it on the very events that 
we read about today that took place in Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13 through Isaiah 53, verse 12. I encourage you to go home and read that. Many would say that the, the prophecy written 700, five to 700 years before the event took place was so precise that it had to take two to three authors to be able to get it right like Isaiah got it right. They're saying that, that Isaiah was written after the fact. I'm here to tell you Isaiah wasn't written after the fact. John, John mentions Isaiah and calls Isaiah out as being authentic and written by Isaiah. And you know what? John was a pretty good Bible teacher. He contributed a few books of the Bible to us today. You, you know what? Jesus Christ called Isaiah the prophet and, and quoted Isaiah the prophet and gave him credit for it. So what does that say? Jesus Christ said Isaiah, Isaiah wrote Isaiah. Isaiah wrote Isaiah. It wasn't two or three people. And I, I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ was a pretty good Bible teacher. Some would say the best. So Jesus Christ quotes him. Isaiah was written to tell us Sunday, whatever day this happens, and it happened to be on Sunday, will never be the same. Sunday will never be the same. I'm going to end up singing that before I end up in this message, I have a feeling. Isaiah knew these events would happen, and Sunday, the day that we celebrate today, will never be the same. Luke chapter 24, verses 2 through 6 goes on to say, And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood uh, by them in dazzling apparel, and they were frightened and bowed their heads, their faces to the ground. The men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. <laughs> Amen. This is, this is Resurrection Sunday. This is Resurrection Sunday. Every time I read that passage of Scripture, and I'm going to get some people that are going to roll their eyes because I know my kids roll their eyes every time I mention this. Every time I read that Scripture, I hear the song in my head, He's Alive by Don Francisco. Even this morning, I played that before I came out here. I played it, played it up in the office. Uh, He's Alive by Don Francisco. Then I had Dolly Parton sing it to me. And it was just great, the whole thing. It was wonderful. He's alive. I, I, also, I also played Keith Green's Easter song. I played it by him. And then I, then I went out and found second chapter of Acts. They sing the same song. Sec and that got some of your attention. Second chapter of Acts, the Easter song. Boy, a wonderful thing. But... I love this song. He's alive. I'm, I'm thinking about having them play that at my funeral. Sorry, kids. I know it may, my, may not turn you guys. But I want to, I, he's alive. Not, not because I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be dead. But I'm going to be alive. Amen. My body's going to be there, but I'm going to be alive. I thought of another song this weekend uh, to play at my service if you guys are taking notes. Uh, um, <laughs> You've Got a Friend by James Taylor. Okay, that would go on there. Okay. <laughs> I know, that was funny. I thought so too. Sunday will never be the same because what was dead was brought to life. What was dead was brought to life. Like my wife said, not to die again, but to live forever. As, as Paul writes, a new creation a new creature in Christ Jesus where the old has passed away and the new is here and the new is forever. God created us to live forever. And in, in this salvation, in this being born again, as, as he talks about it in John chapter 3, you must be born again. In talking about being born again, he's saying you're going to be born again in new creation. The souls will be born again in new creation, never to die. What if you're never born again? If you're never born again, then what you're going to do is you're going to experience eternal death and punishment in hell. Oh, I said that word. Yeah, the word that's not being said in many churches across America today. If you're not born again, if you don't, if you don't accept the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made, 
as we celebrate on Good Friday on the cross. If you don't repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, if you don't allow Him to, to make you anew, and, and let me tell you, in making you anew, there has to be change. If you come to the front at some point in your life and, and uh, say a prayer of commitment, of, of repentance and faith, and then you go back and live your life the exact same way you did before, there's been no change. And God came to transform you. you you gotta, you got to die to live right the second time. And that death includes your, your plan your will, your desire. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? In death, in death, Sunday is just another day. If Jesus had stayed in the tomb, if we had a shrine someplace, because if you go to Israel right now, they'll tell you where they think he was. I mean, we got lots of, there, there's numerous graves or numerous tombs in, in, in Jerusalem where they say, oh, this is it because it's empty and it's this and that. No, if he had truly died and remained dead, those tombs would be enshrined today. And we'd be going, like all the other religions of the world, going to a place where our holy man had died. No, our holy man defeated death. If he, had not, if he had not rose from the grave, Sunday would be dead. But new life makes today totally different. The video and the worship of our wonderful worship band that they brought to you today focus on Jesus' life, love, and resurrection. He loves you. As I shared with you on Good Friday, if you weren't here, go watch the video on, on YouTube. He loves you. The question is, what are you going to do with the love that he shows you? What will you do with the love that he shows you? As I told you, I told Vicki for the first time that I loved her in a 1970, 19, 1977 Toyota Corolla SR5 Sports Coupe. I told her I loved her, and if there had been no response, boy, that would have been tough. That may have been our last date. But because she responded... My love wasn't wasted. What will you do with the love that Jesus Christ has shown to you by giving his life for your sins and then not staying in a grave but giving you the hope of new life that is eternal? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 through 13 says this, The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, examples of that even today, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Oh, this gives me hope. This gives me hope because I've given my life, but I'll tell you, in my life, in my time that I have committed to him, I have at times not been as faithful as I should have. And neither have you. And as we live our lives and we stumble and fall at times, though we always, we always have the choice of being either a Peter or a Judas. Peter, knowing that he's messed up, he's denied Christ, he's, he's messed up his life, he's said things he shouldn't have said, he's done things he shouldn't have done. But what does he do? He runs to Christ for forgiveness. Judas, the same remorse, runs to a field and kills himself. What will you do? Jesus died. Jesus fulfilled God's plan. That's so important that he fulfilled God's plan. And now it's for us to fulfill God's plan in our life. God was not willing to leave us in a state of guilt of sin and condemnation. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. He said, I'm not willing to leave all of mankind in a state of guilt, sin, and condemnation. There, I've got to provide for them an atonement, and Jesus Christ was our atonement. 
John Calvin said this. He said, the father wants his kids back. The father wanted his kids back. And so he sent Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins and to raise from the dead. Jesus' death was clear and his burial proved his death. Some say, well, he, he wasn't truly dead on the cross. Let me tell you, you shove a spear up under your ribs and puncture your heart sack and, and see if you live. See if you survive. Some say, oh, he just swooned in the grave. He, he rose. Put, wrap yourself in a, a hundred plus pounds of grave clothes and, and spices. Some of you can't even lift a hundred pounds. Okay, I'm getting some response there. I'm older, I've been working out. I can, I can lift 100 pounds still. Okay, come on. He's dead. The wrapping of the grave coast would, would even if he was, would have suffocated the guy. Suffocate you? You ever been to a dentist? They put that lead thing over your body so that they don't, you know, as they x ray your mouth. And, and some of you, oh, that feels so good. I just sleep, fall asleep right here. Put 100 pounds on your chest. Half of me. A quarter of some of you. We won't go there. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have went there. But you guys got to remember, my mind goes all different places while I'm up here. (laughs) Death was clear. He was dead. Jesus' death was complete because he poured out his soul in death for you. He hung on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. That's not just for those... That's, that's for all of us because all of us crucified him. You said, oh, I wasn't there. I didn't do it. Tracy, you look old enough to have been there, but I wasn't there. Let me tell you, your sins crucified Jesus Christ. Here's what happened. He poured out his soul and he said, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And he calls out finally at the end. He takes a great breath and says, it is finished you don't have to and you cannot pay for your sins you don't have you don't have a pocketbook deep enough to pay for your sins you don't have good works enough to pay for your sins you don't have enough good deeds in you to pay for your sins you don't have enough good thoughts in you to pay for your sins Jesus Christ paid it all and said it is finished. This is the heart of Christianity. Jesus came. Jesus fulfilled prophecy. Jesus died, on, for, died in our place for our sins. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our hope. And Jesus, the Redeemer, was and is risen just as he said. And Sunday will never be the same. I'm serious. It doesn't have to be the same. Sunday doesn't have to be the same for you. Life doesn't have to be the same for you. I look out over this congregation and I see people that have walked with the Lord for years and years and I see people that have maybe not walked with the Lord for years and years. I see people I don't even know. And I've got to tell you, those that have walked with the Lord, you, you kind of become calloused of what Sunday is and it's time for Sunday to never be the same again. Some of you have walked with Jesus for a short time and you still have the excitement of of this new life that he's given you, this new joy that he's given you. But let me tell you, don't lose it. Look at some of us old people. We've lost it at times. We need to get it back. We walk in here. That's what I like about the hill. It's one of the things. I mean, I got a lot of things. I mean, you don't have time for that tonight. But 
One of the things I love about the hill is you walk in and you feel the love and the fellowship of believers here that you don't feel in a lot of churches. I know, when I'm gone, I visit them. I'm not a real good visitor either, just to let you know when I go. But here's the thing. You need to have the joy. This place needs to have the joy. Because we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. I'm going to move to closing, and some of you are just blown away right now. But I'm going to move into closing because I feel the Spirit of the Lord leading me in this direction. I shared some stuff on Good Friday, and some of you were here, some of you weren't here. And I wasn't going to share it today, but I, I feel led to share this because there's people here today that need a new life. There's some people here today that need to adopt God's plan instead of their plan. There's some people here today that have doubted the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I'm here to tell you it's a historic event recorded by historians. Not revisionist, by historians, people that were there. You, you've got an event that took place that changed the lives of 12, or 11, we'll say 11, of 11 wimpy guys you got, a, you got an event that took, that took 11 wimpy guys that were hiding away and made them bold ministers of the gospel that what? They spread the gospel. They started churches. They, they lost their lives for the cause of the gospel. Because why? They would not deny it. Chuck Colson some of you know who Chuck Colson is. Chuck Colson, some of you don't because you're a lot younger than me. Chuck Colson said the Watergate scandal is a perfect example of why he believes in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the people that knew about it and what they did with the information. Let me tell you, 11 guys they appointed another one to become a 12 again, but 11, 12 guys influenced a group of people on the day of Pentecost. Thousands of people then, their lives were changed to such a point that they would give their life, they would give their fortunes, they would give their home, they would give everything up for the cause of Christ. And today, you know what we do? When things get tough, the old saying was, when I was growing up, when things get tough, the tough get tougher. Or the tough get going. And that's what I was trained to do as a young man. But what we have today is the old saying that come around in the 60s. I'd rather be red than dead. No. I'd rather stand for the cause of Christ today. A lot of people are upset about some of the political stances we have in our world today, and today, I, I, I seen it. I've read all the all, a bunch of the stuff on on what today is. But I'll tell you what, that has been going on since 2009 in our country on this very day. Where were we in 2009? Where were we in 2009 when they when they put this into effect in our country? The church has been silent for way too long in the fact that wrong is wrong is right is right. Truth is truth and a lie is a lie. And we need to return to the founding documents of our Christian faith which is this. Jesus Christ came and died 
for you. And you are a sinner that needs a Savior. You're not riding your parents' coat strings into heaven, young people. You're not riding the pastor's coat strings into heaven. If the rapture were to take place right now, none of you would be fast enough to grab my pant leg. It's over. You're out. It's a relationship that you have. The founding documents that we need to return to is God's word. God's word is true. God's word is truth. And I know you can say all you want about all the other theories out there. But they're theories. Even if you call the Bible a theory, let me tell you this. You've got to decide who to believe. And His Word is more valid than anything else I've ever read. So your choice is today. Will you let Sunday be the same? Or will will you let Jesus Christ change you and change your Sunday forever? Let's stand. notes tonight, Martin Luther said this, if you say, if you see yourself as a little sinner, you will inevitably see Jesus as a little Savior. Today, if you have repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are covered. You are covered. If you're letting the Holy Spirit of God transform your life, You are covered. Amen? You're covered. If you're living God's will, God's plan for your life, you're covered. But there's people here today that aren't covered. You've not truly repented of your sins because repentance is turning away from them. The cross is there to take your punishment. The blood was shed to cover your sins. And the resurrection is there to give you new life in Him. Will you accept that today? Every head bowed, every eye closed as we let the Holy Spirit of God minister in our hearts and in our minds. Spurgeon as you let the spirit move says this my hope lives not because I am not a sinner but because I'm a sinner who Christ died my trust my trust is not that I am holy but that being unholy he is my righteousness my faith rests upon not upon what I am or shall be, or feel or know, but in what Christ is, in what He has done, in what He is right now doing for me. Hallelujah. Today, if you can't say that, then you need to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask for the ministers of our church and leaders of our church to come to the front of this building right now, around the front. Come on. Need some of the leaders and over on this side, guys. Need a few more on this side.
been convicted today by the power of the Holy Spirit and you need to get something right in your life, you can do it right where you're at. But I'll tell you, the greater person today is that person that would step out and come to the front and pray with somebody because where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's promised to be in their midst. You'll also develop a relationship with those that pray with you to help you along this walk with God. And you need that help. So right now, if you feel a hard tug to come to the front of this building and pray with somebody, I want you to do it right now. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. You say, Tracy, you do this every service? No. But today I feel led to do this right now. If you need prayer today for anything, I want you to step out right now. People are moving, and I want you to applaud them as they come forward. Amen? Amen? As people come forward, let's let them know that we're with them. Amen? Amen. Is there more? Is there more? You say, Tracy, are you looking at me? No, I'm not looking at anybody. I just know that the Spirit of God has somebody in mind today that needs a touch from Him. Will you be obedient today? Will you be obedient today? Will you surrender your will, your plan for His plan, for His will? Will you say, Lord, I give you my life, I give you my all. Give it to you, Lord. Give it to you, Lord. Lord, anoint these people, Lord, I pray, with the power of your Holy Spirit. You know the conviction that's needed. You know the guidance that's needed. You know the encouragement that's needed. You know the joy that's needed. You can provide these things in their life right now, Lord. Do it in the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
I just want to close this out by saying to you today, happy Resurrection Day. May the blessings of God and the Spirit of God go with you today. And in the days and weeks to come, may your hearts be open to the will of God and the Word of God in a more powerful way than it's ever been before. I declare this over you today in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us for service today. If you want to get connected, there's so many ways to do so. Check out the website, thehillministries.church. There you'll find out how you can give. You'll find out all the events going on. We have so much going on. So check out that calendar. And we've got a lot of great things coming up. Yeah, and we would love to stay connected with you. We've got socials on Instagram. We've got YouTube. We've got Facebook. Check out our website. We would love for you to just follow along and know what's happening at the church. And if you would like to get in touch with us, you can contact us at office at thehillministries.church. Send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful week.